welcome to the International Women's Day celebrations here at Regalix. Um, this year's theme is Embracing Equity, uh, an important conversation to have for women in the workplace. Uh, today we're going to be speaking to Cam Raghavan. She is Director and Head of Pentlands India. Cam comes with 27 years of experience across business transformation, ops, financial sector. She's also worked across multiple geographies, which I think puts her in a perfect place to kickstart this first episode. Hi, Cam. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to join in. Looking forward to the chat. I think anything um, that actually recognizes a, you know, a marginalized group of um people, individuals, giving them credit for what they bring every single day into our workplace, into our homes. I think it's absolutely worth doing it. And I think um, if we go back to whenever the first International Women's Day was, I think the challenge challenges that would have been faced by the women in those days would have been so daunting. The very fact that, you know, we've evolved enough to a period, um, to a time time in in terms of being able to have the conversation around equity i think that's testament to the fact that these days which commemorate women uh, have played their part um and i think it's it's a great opportunity you know women play an incredibly important role in all walks of life you know at home work they bring in um an incredible mix of capability and and compassion um and what a great opportunity you know even if it's only once a year to really acknowledge and and give kudos to those women yeah the, the very fact that you know we we are talking about equity and we are talking about barriers that still exist uh, we're talking about biases that are very much part of the workplace uh, and and for that uh, you know biases at home as well especially in a country like india um uh, which is why it's so important that we acknowledge um you know uh, as far as i'm concerned i think there should be one international women's day a month <laughs> to really force the agenda This is a question I I get asked quite often um from from younger you know female colleagues that are coming into the business as well and I and I think you know I I like to answer it in in two ways one is obviously <clears throat> you know the glass ceiling is very much there you know we can talk about how far we've come how organizations are now promoting women in leadership roles but the reality is the biases which are decades old um don't just go away don't disappear they still very much uh, you know are part and parcel of our work lives um um in my personal case i mean there have been instances and i'm going to give share a couple of examples i remember um being given an opportunity to lead the commercial function uh for india and a, and a couple of markets in the middle east um and i was super excited about it i mean selling is not something which comes naturally to to me but this was an opportunity to really push those boundaries and and learn along the way as well but the the line manager at the time um uh, basically asked me uh, a question which angered me then and it still kind of annoys me when i think about it he said you have a young family um do you really want to be traveling so much because commercial opportunity means you do have to travel to meet partners um you know i just sat there thinking you would never ever ask that question you know with a male colleague you know it just would not be something you would ask um and 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 similarly uh very often i see this not just in my company i think we need to be better at this but across the board um women will have to try that extra little you know and and push a little bit more to be considered for roles um in leadership or new functions whereas uh, a male colleague you know probably doesn't need to work out as hard um 
and and this is something that you know I grapple with you want to make kind of concessions to the fact that we are getting better at it but you know we still have a long way to go um and and the biases that exist are so deep rooted that we you know we have to proactively acknowledge it and and create mechanisms to work through these biases so we get to a place of you know real equity and inclusion um yeah so i mean even today i think uh, like there are occasions on a day to day basis where i feel you know what why do i have to work so much harder to to get what my male counter parts would probably eat, you know get much e- much more easily than i do um so that exists and you know the bias also exists uh, as somebody and you would probably you know when we grow up in in a place like india the bias is start um you know right when we are 8 9 and 10 in terms of what kind of sports we can play uh what kind of career choices we can have so it's so deep rooted and it's going to take a lot of time and effort for us to get rid of these biases So I think the way society treats men and women is is to a large extent what drives this. Um there is such a clear male privilege that exists, you know, which is not earned. Whereas when it comes to a woman, in order to be heard, you have to almost go through the loops of having a, a systematic approach of working out what the pros and cons are and why it makes sense. Um you know, it's actually a, a a big job whereas a male uh, person in comparison wouldn't have to do as much work and i think the lack of confidence does not mean that women you know cannot do a good job it just means that they're probably not as open and expressive as a male colleague would be um and what that means in terms of their work life in particular is that they do get left behind when it comes to promotions to new work opportunities um and i think this also is the the way women are built naturally they're not overly uh, brash you know they're very they tend to be on the conservative sta- side in terms of how they promote themselves um a woman also focuses on getting the right um balance i think from in terms of home and work uh, more often than not whereas a male colleague would uh, most likely focus on how they're going to leverage on the relationships that they have uh with the um stakeholders so you would have scenarios like you know a male colleague would very happily go out for a drink or two with a, a key stakeholder uh whereas a woman um uh at the same it, with, with the same kind of stakeholder relationship would probably be thinking about heading back home to the kids and making sure you know they're fed they bathed and put to bed um unfortunately that does limit and it shouldn't i, I completely don't think it should be the basis of how uh somebody's performance or somebody's ability to do a role is defined but unfortunately what that means is the opportunities available to build that bond with your key stakeholders reduces i mean how often do you hear things like oh i'm going out with with my line manager for a game of golf for example if you happen to play golf or i'm going out for a drink this evening with my with my manager women don't generally de- tend to do that as often which means that they're not able to build those relationships of trust and um comfort level with their line managers which invariably also has an impact on their confidence levels because they think you know they they just won't be able to compete because it's not a level of playing field um so it's it's very unfortunate and i think as an organization we have to try to be better at really recognizing capability for what it is and not be driven by you know the, the other relationships on the cusp that form that drive a lot of these work decisions
So I think with with a lot of companies, and my workplace is no different. Um, for us, DEI is an absolutely vital element of how we set ourselves for future success. Um, respecting unique traits of employees um, means that we are able to target a wider group of um, talent groups um, to recruit from. But more importantly, you know, the company actually benefits because you're getting diverse views, diverse perspectives um, that you can capitalize on. Um, and in, an inclusive workplace also uh, helps establish a level of trust with the organization, which then invariably means your your attrition levels are low, your engagement levels are more, and uh, you're creating a happier uh, culture within the organization, which then drives um, the right level of performance as well. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a win-win. I mean, how boring would it be if you had like 10 people all kind of looking the same and, you know, bringing in the same kind of skill sets into the organization? Um, so I, I personally, as well as I think Pentland are aligned in this, um, for us, it's a non-negotiable. It's how, how quickly we can go on that path and really be a, a DEI champion, which is, which is the thing that um, we're working on. It, it's not a yes or no question at all. It's, it's absolutely something that needs to happen and needs to happen now, you know, if it hasn't already happened. I think, you know, um, you know, as I grow older, I, I kind of start to really believe that, you know, we are in charge of our own destiny. Um, you know, very often the younger me probably would have waited in the sidelines and expected somebody else to take the lead on giving me the opportunities or encouraging me to go for another role. Uh, where I am now, I think uh, a little bit of wisdom helps. I, I really do feel that we need to have those conversations. If we feel there is a bias in, in our work setup or you know the individuals who work with us, I think it's equally important for us to say, you know, this is not right. Call it out, you know, um, build an ally network, build um, people around you or establish relationships with male counterparts who will actually fight the battle for you as well. Um, and, you know, don't wait for somebody to pull out that chair at the dining table. You do it yourself. Um, you know, you have every right to be there. And if somebody else doesn't do it, you do it. Uh, and I think that's, that's the shift in the way I perceive things. It's very hard, though. Uh, for somebody who's relatively junior coming in, trying to establish their footprint in the business, to be able to be that um, confident and out there. So this is where I think mentoring helps. Um, leaders, female leaders in the business have to take it upon themselves to try and help with the, the junior female uh, colleagues that are coming into the business. Um, but it is having those conversations. If your um, diversity ratios don't look um, as good as it should look, push push your HR, you know, push the, the stakeholders who are making these hiring decisions and, and challenge status quo. It's not easy and it won't bring about change overnight, but I think it's the step in the right direction. And hopefully, you know, with continued focus on it, we'll get to a place where most organizations are kind of truly uh, diverse. Um, I, I, I still think it's a huge amount of work to be done though. So I think India is playing catch up, but they're doing a good job though. So I don't, I don't think, um, they slow in kind of embracing what needs to happen, but we are definitely playing catch up. And, and the reason is also because of the nature of the country that we live in. You know, we have uh, deep set um, value systems, uh, kind of thought processes on what a girl can and can't do, you know, what kind of um, jobs a, a woman can engage herself in. I mean, even, even um, you know, like I, I do get involved with the interview process of candidates that are joining our company. And even today, some of the things I get asked uh, by a female candidate are things like, 
uh, do I have to work shifts, you know, um, can I actually just have the 10 to 6 shift rather than the UK EMEA hours, whereas a male colleague does not ask those questions. So you have to really kind of think through what's driving that. It's not because a female candidate feels like, you know, um, it'll be too scary to be out till 8 o'clock, but it's what's happening at home, you know, they more likely than not need to go back home and cook for the the family and, you know, feed the kids and put them to bed. So these are things that don't change. There's an expectation from society that a woman's role is still very much looking after her family unit first. And she might be equally good on a professional front, probably earning the same money or more than the husband, but there's still an expectation from the family, um, just the the way we are um, wired, I think, as a society that, you know, the primary focus still needs to be about the family. Um, So, you know, what that means is, you know, we are still probably quite a way away from really creating that um, ecosystem where women feel confident enough to just go after any opportunity that you know they feel passionate about Um, and it this is where I think real change um, needs really starts at home um, in terms of our behaviors and how we uh, bring up our children you know are we being completely non-biased? Are we providing our female or girl girl child's children the same opportunities as our boys? I think those are the questions that there's no real quick answer um, and it's going to take time. But as, as long as we're addressing it and we're pushing it and we're making people have those uncomfortable conversations, I think we're on the right track. But um, to answer your question, I think there are other markets where it's it's probably driven a little bit by statutory mandates as well in some of these markets um, but yeah they are ahead of us on the curve but there is acknowledgement and awareness which is what you need to bring about some change hopefully we're on the right track so i think there's two elements to it uh, i know one is i think Uh, It's creating a system of mentors, Uh, it's creating allies for women who want to chase those dreams, you know. Um, It's easy to kind of step, uh, take a step back, but you know, you're not really kind of making yourself a happy person, you know, you you kind of, um, I guess, you know, limiting yourself because you think this is all I can do with all the other things that are going on in my life. But for them to come out of that, Uh, state of mind and to really kind of pushing the boundaries you need a lot of other people you know helping them make that shift Um, it comes from uh, people within their their family setup but also equally colleagues at their workplace which is men and women um, giving them the confidence that they can make it happen. Um, the most important thing, again, going back to my conversation earlier about how do I mentor young girls, I always tell them, you know, don't ever put limits on what you can achieve, you know, that the world's your oyster. And, and if somebody's saying you can't do it, prove them wrong, you know, dream big, go after it. Um, because at the end of the day, you want to look back on your life and feel proud of everything you've achieved. There's no point in, you know, living in regrets or saying, you know, I wish I'd done that. Uh, I wish, you know, the world was a a better place and had given me the opportunities. I think we have to ensure that we give the next generation of women in this country the confidence that they can go after big things and achieve it. Um, And, and, you know, like if there are people that are not helping in, in that narrative, I think I think it's it's also important for people who can to call out and and make them aware that they're not really being fair. Um, so I think that's that's probably how I would put it. You know, it's it's just dreaming big and and sticking to it. You know, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Yeah. So. I think the first thing is to have clarity in terms of what it is that you want to do. 
you know not really just follow the the path that's been anointed right so for example you know uh, i was reading the statistic the other day somebody was sharing with me there are 700000 engineers who pass out every year just from the states three states tamil nadu karnataka and andhra and and the the question i have is how many of those 700000 really want to be engineers right so i think it goes <laughs> it kind of precedes the conversation of what it is that they want to achieve i think the main thing for young people is to really get clarity on what it is that makes them happy because it's it's a lonely world and you know you don't want to be doing a job that you hate for i don't know 30 40 years of your life um and i think that's the key and and we don't do a great job in our universities in our schools in really helping foster that that way of thinking um so i think um so that's one element i think we need to do a lot better in creating those spaces for young children young people to understand what are the career choices they have what are the options they have it doesn't need to be the same old stuff that you know our parents and their parents did uh the second thing uh once you have visibility is is ensuring workplaces do uh create room for uh bringing in young graduates or young people into the business men or women this is um where they they just help them figure out what it is what what their passions are what their capabilities are and what what kind of roles they could do with the skill sets that they have it's finding that fine balance of you want to do a job but you also want to try and do a job that really gives you something back you know um in terms of engagement um uh pushing pushing you know you need to feel happy about what you're doing i think at the end of the day um but where we can make a difference and i'm talking about myself because i can help younger people frame this in their mind and go after it is essentially creating that safe spaces within organizations where people can honestly discuss their insecurities they fears they ambitions and have somebody else who'll just listen and and kind of maybe give them a couple of pointers on what they could do um it's it's important i think it goes without saying that young women do need to have role models that they can model themselves on so they should absolutely research into who are the different people in various stra- you know areas of um business not just one particular area and what they can benefit from um these amazing uh leaders female leaders that are out there um and i think the one of the good things for me anyway is while i was growing up i probably had mrs gandhi right she was the absolute superstar but when i look at it today like there there are so many female superstars in every every field every area you know entertainment sport um law um so there's so much we can learn from them from those leaders every single day and try and kind of adapt some of that into our day to day lives um so yeah it's a long answer to your question but i feel it's you know it's not just one thing it's a it's a combination of things and finding those allies who really do want to make a difference um you know and and get a lot out of just helping you and making sure that you know your dream your ambition can be fulfilled mm-hmm.